So we come to the third move of the eight brocade moves we're doing with the hypno, hip, hypnotherapy, Pilates and yogic principles within the breathing. Um, again, this one's called uh, drawing the arrow, drawing the arrow even to let the arrow fly. Sorry, drawing the bow even to let the arrow fly and taking an arrow to shoot the golden eagle. Um, again, it's it sort of mixed up with different forms, very similar to their names. Um, they vary in different forms. Again, there's 40,000 different Qigong forms we know about, um, so and styles, etc. So they do get sort of slightly varied as names. But again, that doesn't really matter. It's just the movement we're taking and not doing it the traditional way that, that I've done in other videos. The breathing is going to be different, just simply added to that motion. And the next one after this is looking back to eliminate the five fatigues and seven illnesses, or wise L gazes backwards to eliminate fatigue. But this one is number three of the eight brocades. But we've got three forms added together. So the three forms are the eight brocades and the 18 form Qigong sequence with a nine form at the end. Um, that doesn't really matter, it's 35 moves. And this is like the third move of the first eight brocades and also the third move of the whole 35. It doesn't really matter, you can do these segmentally or in, or just segmentally or in order. It doesn't really matter. I'll put in brackets what the number of the form is and what the number is. But again, get that all out of the way. We go straight in with the breathing. The main stuff I'm gonna do is the breathing. That's the most important bit. The movement you can easily pick up and adapt to your body and your union of your mind and body. So with that, we're gonna zip up pelvic floor, scoop out the abdominals, take the navels towards the spine in the Pilates manner, unlike the Qigong form, which breathes into the belly like a balloon, but we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna zip up pelvic floor, scoop out the abdominals, then two muscles go together in that Pilates way. And as soon as you do that, that's gonna naturally help us breathe into these fish gills wide and full. These lower lobes of lungs, the intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. So as you do that right now, simply zip up pelvic floor and scoop out the abdominals and take the navels towards the spine. As you do that, that's going to naturally help you breathe into these lower lobes of lungs, the intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay, and as you do that, what we call lateral thoracic breathing right now, breathing through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips as you still zip up pelvic floor and scoop out the abdominals. That'll help us use the transverse, abdo transverse abdominus, the corset muscle, the powerhouse, the girdle of strength, three layers deep and the pelvic floor, by helping us breathe anywhere but the belly but helping us breathe into these lower lobes of lungs because there's nowhere else for the breath to go apart from into these fish gills, 3D style, organ deep, sow deep, even bone marrow deep right now. As you do that, feel that breath going in low and deep to the lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Right now, as you do that, as if someone's open an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go. That free, expansive breath. Lovely. Brilliant. So with that Pilates breath, we're breathing in through the nose still and exhaling through pursed lips. As if you're sort of blown out a candle through pursed lips. As you're doing that right now, we can slightly change that. So that's pretty much in short, the Pilates breath. But as we come away from that, or we, we stay with that basically, with the breath you're doing right now, carry on doing that right now, but all we do is close the mouth now, and it's the same deal, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out the abdominals, but the only difference is we simply breathe in and out through the nose right now. And as you do that right now, Breathing in and out through the nose. As you're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out abdominals. That's gonna make that slightly more yogic breath. Just give you that space to just feel that difference. 
through breathing in out through the nose because that will lengthen the whole will cycle of the breath. Okay, through that small little filter through the nose right now, but as you're doing it, still zip up pelvic floor, scoop out abdominals. And just enjoy that slightly yogic breath, similar to some yoga breaths. There's lots of many different types, I'm not gonna digress, but that just simply lengthen the breath. What you do in the asanas, you lengthen the breath. <clears throat> now you'll naturally feel that want to fall, that out breath, want to fall longer than the in breath. So simply allow that to happen. And as you allow that to happen right now, that out breath to go longer than the in breath, simply allow that to happen. And as you do that, as you allow that to happen, you can consciously take your mind to that out breath. Okay. And as you take your mind to that out breath, you can consciously lengthen that out breath, elongate that out breath right now, quadruple it, double it, triple it, whatever it is, slightly longer or a lot longer within your limits. Don't force anything, just elongate your out breath longer than the in breath, which is gonna br bring in the benefits, that benefit, that parasympathetic nervous system within your body. The parasympathetic nervous system the easiest way, easiest way to think of it is all the things you don't think about within your body, the housekeeping properties of the body, sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation will all be benefited by just simply elongating your out-breath longer than your breath, in-breath, encouraging them restful relaxation responses and endless streams of comfort. Allowing that simplicity just to relax the mind as you elongate that out-breath right now. Again, that's gonna benefit cellular communication, kidney and organ function, etc. That simple, basic state of health and renewal and that natural state of well-being within the body. All the things you don't think about are being benefited. Lovely, by just simply elongating the out-breath longer than that in-breath. That brings in the hypnotic responses, a bit like 7-Eleven breathing in hypnosis. Now again, you can stay with that, that's more than adequate, that breath you're doing right now, zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, being aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath, as that weaves that tapestry of relaxation, when every single organ, cell, sinew the body, Simply breathe in through the nose and out through the nose as you zip up pelvic floor, scoop out the abdominals and take the navels towards the spine. Now, if you want to take this on a little bit further and you can do it, that's great. If you can't, don't worry, just carry on breathe, breathing as you are. But if you can if you, and you want to, you'll take this on to slightly more advanced yogic breath. Then we grip at the esophagus or we narrow the esophagus Okay, and make a sort of raspy, silky sound for the back of the throat. Again, it sounds like this. Anyways, to demonstrate, so as you still zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals, breathing out through the nose, while elongating the out breath longer than the in breath, you can go for the ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit. So again, as you do this, it sounds like this. It's like a, it's like going ah, with a mouth shut. Soft, silky, whistling, ujjayi breath, victorious breath. So you're breathing for the nose, it's like a. And exhale, keep them shoulders down. That soft, silky, whistling, ujjayi breath, victorious breath, seashore breathing, near enough like sort of Darth Vader breath, just like going ah, with the mouth shut, okay? Lovely, that stimulates your thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Helps us build the heat in the body, helps us fan the fire, burn all the toxins in the body. Ujjayi breath, victorious breath, lovely. And that gives the mind something to focus on, as you can hear that right now. Even if you're, you can't get the ujjayi, ujjayi breath, don't worry. Just still be aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath. 
as it weaves that tapestry of relaxation in every single organ, cell, sinew of the body, that manifests that breath, every atom, sinew of the body. Again, as you become aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath, with the Ujjayi breath or not. Okay, if you've got the Ujjayi breath, that just further gives you something more to focus on. Okay, and even help you lengthen the whole will cycle once more again, especially the out breath. Okay, lovely. Helps with weight control, etc. Helps us build the heat in the body to fan the fire about all the toxins of the body. Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit. Lovely. So, with that, we go straight into the motion. It's a nice sort of big, gross motor move. Again, as with all these, I use the Iyengar yoga principles. Only come in as deep as you keep the knees in line with toes, or less, okay? Again, basically, you can start high, I'll go down deep, but I'll go no deeper than knees in line with toes for that Iyengar yoga alignment, old school style. Again, it's a nice one that opens out the chest and all the organs in the chest, the heart, the lungs, the pericardium, the heart lining. Again, so take an arrow, shoot the golden eagle, start with the hands here, we'll go back and demonstrate. You're gonna breathe in, and you're gonna exhale, come down. Now again, feet slightly wider than hip with a part in a sort of horse riding stance. Feet slightly out, but not Charlie Chaplin, they're slightly out of V. Back of the hands here, we breathe in, and exhale, come down, only as deep as you like. Be up here, or down here. Lengthen up for the crown, shoulders down. Zip up, gather in. Breathe in and elongate the out breath, longer than the in breath as you exhale down. No lower than knees and arm and toes. Again, really fire the exhale through the walls. Focus where you're putting that breath. As if you're sort of firing that resonant breath, that lovely resonant breath through the wall. If you get there, if you get down with the motion really soon, just carry on with that elongated exhale. Okay, remember we're still elongating the exhale, breathing in coming up, exhaling, shoulders down. Anything that opens out the chest is good. We can press the chest a lot through hitching the shoulders, etc. So anything that opens out the chest is really good. Breathing in, exhale, shoulders down. Again. Push up, these are organic, they're coming up from the ground. And exhale, really fire that exhale through the walls. Take the hand back towards you, stretch the finger flexors in the hands, and open out the chest. And all the organs in the chest, shoulders down. Okay, and again, find your pace. Remember, it's your speed and tempo to make these as easy or as hard as you like. Remember, you can exploit the range speed and tempo, so slower would be harder. Faster would be easier, but elongate the out breath to bring in them parasympathetic nervous response, nervous system responses even. Okay. And again, exploit the range. Remember it can be a centimeter, a millimeter, or a millimeter or a foot. It's only as low as you can keep the knees and arm and toes. Okay. Or less if you like. Okay, again, there's two schools of thought with them, but I'm sticking to the old school Iyengar yoga principles there. Lovely. So Next move is the fourth of the eight brocades, but fourth of the whole 35, three forms together, looking back to eliminate the five fatigues and seven illnesses, or wise owl gazes backwards to eliminate fatigue. Again, simply wise owl gazes backwards, that's next. Bang, that was the end of number three. Number four next, bang.